Well, it, it's not working in prod. Indeed, it's not working in prod. Well, it's not my problem. It works just fine on my machine and on the dev server. Well? Well, I told you all systems are ISOs. And if it's working in dev, it's working in prod. It's ISO? Oh, yeah. Essentially, I mean, pretty much almost. Almost? What do you mean, almost? Uh, you know, there's maybe a very small gap in minor versions. And for some plugins. Nothing particularly important. Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's show. My name is Peter McKee. I run the community and developer relations team here at Docker. And super excited to have everybody here. If you're in the chat, say hello. Uh, love to see who's all there. Um, and please, as we're going through today, feel free to ask questions. We'd love to interact with the audience. But I am really excited today to have a good friend of mine and a new captain, new person to our community. Not totally new, but relatively new. Francesco, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Uh, I think this is my dream coming through because I've been watching you on on YouTube for years and finally I'm into the show. So I'm super <laughs> excited. I'm a little bit nervous, but uh, it's great. It's great to have you to have you here and being a guest because usually I'm not the host. So hi everyone in chat. Hi Julia. Hi up the I don't know if I pronounce it that well. Hey Scott. Yeah. Okay. This is getting the imposter syndrome is kicking in. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we're, I'm excited to have you on here. We've been we've been talking about having you on for a while. But yeah, hey, and thanks for those nice, kind words. I appreciate it. Well, awesome. So wait, right before we jumped on, you told me something very interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna change up the script here on you a little bit. But you said you think in English, although you're from Italy, Italian's your native language, but you think in English. That's interesting. How how did that come about? Did, is that just from programming or? No, no, it's not about programming, but it's it's because uh, I've been starting to interview a lot of people, hundreds of people. So now I talk more in English rather than in Italian. So I have some problems. Sometimes I have to translate in Italian when I when I speak in Italian. But uh, but my English is not is not good yet. Mm -hmm. So I always need to practice. No, 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 that's not true. You should hear my Italian. My Italian is way worse than your English. So your your English is is wonderful. Well, awesome. We got a lot. We got a lot to do today. We're going to be doing some live coding. We're going to take a look at building out some APIs and Python and JavaScript, uh, talking to a database, and we're going to bring that all together into a compose file. Use some official images. Use two different languages to connect to one database. So we're going to be showing a lot. So you ready to jump into it? You want to get going? Yeah, maybe it's better to to chat at the end because if I get Perfect. some problems, some bugs, so, so let, let's see if that, that uh, five five minutes could be really really useful later, and yeah. then we can relax. Uh, by the way, I, I just taken a sip of of this. Uh, thank you for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's people awesome. Loved, people loved this. Uh, yes. Awesome. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. W let, yeah, you're right. Let's you and I could probably talk for the full hour. So. Let's jump into it. People didn't come in to hear us talk that much, but to, to see us build some stuff. So let me uh, let me turn on your screen here and we'll get going. Okay, All perfect. Right. Awesome. So just before starting, let me tell you that uh, uh, doing this uh, live stream on the official uh, Docker YouTube channel, I had to make some practice. So I started my Twitch channel because of this. So I've already tested this some, some times. I also got some people from the Docker uh, team. So what will we do uh, today? Today we will create, uh, this will be a very simple uh, example. So we will create, um, we will start with a Postgres container, you can see here. Then we will create a Node.js application, super simple then uh, a Flask application. But the interesting part, uh, this is very basic, is that both applications uh, are connected with the same DB. So, and, and also we start from scratch. We don't start with from any existing code. Uh, probably I'll, I'll need to copy past the same, some uh, long strings for configuration. But aside of this, uh, we will start from, from zero. So when you say, uh, let's start, uh, Peter, I can, I can start. Awesome. Okay, so I've already created a, a Git uh, repository. And uh, so first of all, we initialize our Git uh, uh, repository here. Perfect. And then uh, first of all, <laughs> the first important thing is to create the Git ignore. Uh, 
this is to avoid to push some heavy node modules on uh, on github which uh, probably is not a, um, a good idea by the way peter i don't see the the chat so um yes so... No, no problem okay so let's start from the from the postgres uh, container by the way just let me show you the type so not, i'm not cheating so if i check here i don't have any container and i also i don't have any images so the system is clean okay no, nothing <laughs> nothing up your sleeves <laughs> yeah but of course just because i've cleaned before this otherwise usually it's full of <laughs> <most stuff. laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay so uh, let's create a docker compose file i'd like to start from this one okay and here let's define let's choose a version i don't know if this is the latest one the 3.9 can you confirm this that's perfect yep okay so inside the docker compose we can create the various services okay so uh, let's start by hitting this and then let's start with the postgres uh, service because we're in docker compose so let's call this uh, uh, db and it's important to choose a name uh, for this service so container name it will be db because i'm not that that good at fantasy of course <laughs> and then <laughs> then the um, the image we will use uh, an official postgres image as you said before uh, peter you were right i'm not writing a, a new uh, postgres uh, image from scratch in the live stream sorry for that yeah exactly uh, well sorry. as you it's type away time. yeah no as you type away let me because I think it's important to mention, right, about our official images and our uh, trusted content. So on Hub, we have a lot of uh, official images, which is Docker official images. It's our uh, premier content, right? And Docker has uh, taken a lot of open source projects and created best practices, created the Docker files. They're layered on top of each other. They're scanned for viruses, and then they're housed on Hub. And it's a great way to kick off your projects, right? Like Francesco was saying, you don't want to create a Postgres base sure. image by yourself, right? You, you, should, you can you leverage know, your content. You know, yeah. Peter, I'm that good that I could, but it's just um, uh, probably a matter of uh, of time. <laughs> yeah. So here, let, let me show you since uh, we're talking about official Postgres images, because it's important that he, here we are not building any image, but we are using an existing image. I'm using this because I'm sure that the Postgres version 12 works, by the way, I don't have Postgres on the machine, I've clicked on something wrong. And um, so when we will use the environment variables defined in the official Postgres image. So here I'll use this, just three of them. So this one, this one, and this one. So I can choose the value, but I can't choose the key, of course, because I've not created the image, right? right. Okay. Okay, so uh, the ports, so let's, uh, let's define the ports that we want to expose externally and internally. We can also do, with, with quotes, but uh, I'm sure that in this case it, it should work. Uh, okay, so maybe let's put the quotes because uh, this morning technically Josh said me that maybe it's better to put quotes. Okay, then okay. let's define the the environment variables. So it will be uh, m Postgres uh, user, and now we will see how much fantasy I have. This will be Postgres user Postgres password. And Postgres DB. So I'll use uh, just Postgres for all of them. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Peter. But the way you no, can change fine. them, you can change them, of course. And then something which is uh, very important is a concept very important uh, in Docker. We are using uh, volumes inside this uh, for the, for this container. So we will define a contain a name a named container, uh, which we, we will call this uh, PG data, and uh, this will be mapped uh, in internally to this. Uh, this one var lib postgresql slash data okay so just one second okay and then let's define uh, uh, the end uh, the volumes in this docker compose we can also show the the network part then but uh, okay so this is basically uh, instead of uh, installing postgres you can do this now if i haven't made any typos i can Run, I can run this um, service using this command, docker. Can you see? Yes. Okay. Docker compose up, and then we can do the, um, 
dash D, which stands for detached. So we leave the terminal uh, uh, open. So left, and then the name of the service. There we go. So it's pulling down the Postgres. And image. as you, okay, if I would have, if I wanted to cheat, I could have already the Postgres image on the machine, but I want to show. And this is a good way also to take us a little rest. <laughs> yep. And let me let me talk a little bit about the the compose file. Um, so you can see it on the screen there. So the ports. So the the number on the left is the port that's on your local machine, your local host, and that's telling Docker to map that port inside the container to a port inside of those. Um, we're using the same ports here, but you could you could actually change those, right? So you can port you can map port eighty locally into five four three six, whatever you want, right? So you can run Postgres on multiple uh, instances of Postgres on your machine using Docker and Compose, and then access them by using different ports, right? And then the, the same is true for your volumes. Down below, defined a volume, PG data. And then above that, in the DB service, we say on the left-hand side, use PG data, mm -hmm. the volume that Docker will manage for you, a data store, and map that inside of the file system in the container at var, WAC, lib, WAC, Postgres, SQL, WAC data. And so that's a mapping between a volume that lives outside of your container so you can have persistent storage and that'll map inside of your container. So anything's written into that Postgres SQL data will get stored in volumes and it'll when your container goes away since they're stateless and none of nothing you write to disk when a, in a running container is saved when that container stops and is removed that data goes away. So this is a way of using volumes to persist our data. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. And by, by the way, I already made a typo while you were talking. Let, let me show because I, I really see the error. I said, okay, so this is a very bad start. But likely, a good thing is that I'm doing tests because otherwise it would be a problem. I can see that here I've spelled the password wrong. So mm -hmm. let me do this. <laughs> then Docker compose. But of course, this is just to show the Docker compose down command that removes the service, Peter. Of course. Yes. Just for this. Because, okay, so let's start. let's start again. Just show. Let's see. So now we have this uh, this uh, service up and running. So now an interesting uh, we can access the, this database in many different ways. There is PG admin, there is Table Plus. But my favorite way, to be honest, it's a very raw uh, method, which is using the Docker exec command. So let's show this. this. Is also an excuse to to show this. So we can do Docker exec. And the name of the mm, container. So uh, now maybe first of all dash IP, which stands for interactive and uh, open TTY. It's a terminal basically. Then the name of the service. And then we can execute the command. Yes. Uh, so we can do psql dash u, which stands for user. This is something related to p to psql and not postgres and not uh, Docker. And then Postgres. And here I am inside the container. This is this where this has been one of my haha moments when I, I first of all I learned the Docker. So, but here, for example, you can do this. You can see we don't have any relations. This is correct. But uh, we will we will come back at this uh, uh, terminal later, and hopefully we will see something <laughs> if I don't <laughs> if I can spell uh, stuff. So this is uh, something uh, very very basic. So let me check very fast uh, the. The readme file because I created this. Mm -hmm. I can't read the chat, the chat, by the way. So, okay, so we are here now. Okay, so let's start. Let's start creating this uh, the the JavaScript uh, one. By the way, this is not because I prefer JavaScript uh, <laughs> Python. I've selected the randomly, so we can create a JavaScript uh, folder. It has also this uh, nice uh, icon. We can step into that. We will create a mm, service using Node.js and Express. So Node.js is a JavaScript runtime environment, and Express is the framework. So now I am inside this uh, JavaScript uh, folder, and first of all, we need to initialize the the project. So we can do this with doing npm init dash y. Okay, and uh, and then let's install the dependencies. So npm install 
and we need the three three uh, things so three packages so express which is the framework then pg which is the package uh, to for the connection to postgres and then uh, we can use uh, an orm i'll use this uh, this is pretty old but uh, it works so if you have a different one of course you can use that okay yeah i, I like sqlize I've, I've used it in the past yeah now I maybe, nice. maybe i should replace this but uh, mm, for, for the example it's uh, it's uh, it's okay for the example okay so now i'll do something super fast because i should uh, use github copilot but uh, I don't have tried it yet. And so uh, what I usually do, this is this is also what I do when I need to create a new service. So I, <laughs> since I don't want to type all of this, I go to the express hello world, I copy this, I, uh, I paste into an index.js file here, just to see if it works, if I made some dumb mistakes. And then uh, also to check if I have node installed for Node, we will use a, a local version too. For Python, we will just try just with Docker. So, and this is something super basic. So we have oh, this is super small. So we have this uh, this hello world. Okay. So now, if I have time, I would like also to try something else. Okay. Uh, so now let's uh, f try. I like to create a Docker file uh, as the first thing, and uh, maybe I'm in the right place to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're. Good. Yeah, I think that's a good practice, right? Yeah. So let's use uh, one of the latest version of uh, of Node. We can use version seventeen, and in the latest in the latest tries in the live stream, I've started to. We can use the Alpine or also the Slim version, whatever whatever we want, just to save some time during the live stream. Okay. So the from command just uh, I can explain uh, whatever you want. Uh, you want, uh, Peter? Do we have uh, one hour to do this? Uh, yeah, we can. Let, let's go fast because I do want to show, but we can, I can hit okay. the, uh, I can explain the Docker file very okay. high level very quickly, but. Um, yeah, if you, so, if you want to highlight, uh, we can do uh, team, team work. Uh, yes. Yeah. But I, I do want to highlight the from, cause it's kind of, so we talked about Postgres in the compose file. We were using uh, the Postgres official image from hub uh, and we're doing the same here. So from is a way to say images or if you're an object oriented programmer, you understand the, the concept of an inheritance, right? So you have a class, um, a base class, and then you inherit from that class, and you're going to use that functionality from that base class in your new class, but you don't want to rewrite it, right? And so we have an official image node and version 17-slim. Slim refers to the size size yeah. of the image. Um, it's kind of a de facto standard with some naming conventions. Um, yes. But the, uh, you'll see all the tags in Docker Hub. But the key point here is to understand that we didn't have to go and build a node image. We didn't have to go understand how to install node on Linux, how to keep the underlying Linux uh, Ubuntu version um, up to date with security patches, everything. That's all handled for us by uh, Docker official images program. So this is lovely. We go in right away. We'd say, hey, I need a, I need a, a, a node image to run my application. Let me use the official image. It's there already. It's been used by millions of developers. And so use the from command to base our image on top of this image. I just want to to show very fast that, for example, on my machine, uh, I have the node version 12, which is also maybe a bit outdated now because I usually don't use yeah. my local version. I just use the, the, but for example, if I have to to use exactly this version in a project, I can, for node, I can use something called the MVM. But mm -hmm. uh, anyway, this is uh, this is my favorite method. I also <laughs> argue argue about this on Twitter because uh, uh, I like I like this style, of course. Yeah. Okay. Then uh, then we have this uh, copy command. Super simple. This is basically you can copy file or folders uh, from source to a destination. This is a little trick uh, that you can use uh, in uh, an NPM project because if you this is use uh, some uh, re regex uh, regex uh, regex or regex and. Uh, so it will copy the package.json, and if it exists, it will also copy this package.lock.json. But if you don't have the package.lock.json, it will, it will silently fail. So this is the uh, little trick. Yes. And then you can execute the commands, as I did before. NPM, this is should be NPM, NPM is, um, install, but uh, this is just to save some seconds. And then again, we can do uh, this, and uh, I, 
just remember that I have to do something. So I can do this in different ways. So I can either just copy the folder that I want, but to, to be honest, this is my favorite method if we do something, because if I do this, uh, everything in this folder, the folder where the, the Docker file is located will be copied into the image file system. So uh, this is not the modules. I don't want this inside the image file system, right? So uh, to, avoid the, to avoid this, uh, we can create something which is called the Docker Ignore. And for people who, who use uh, Git, uh, it's uh, basically the same idea. So I can do this. This is my favorite method. I've seen people copying uh, the single folders. I don't like that approach because uh, uh, if you add maybe a new folder, you need to remember that you need to add also that that, that file. So in this case, uh, I'm, I prefer to say what I don't want. It's like the Git, uh, the Git uh, approach. Okay. Thank now you. we can inform that we will want to use uh, this, this port, expose 3000, and then the CMD command, which is the default command when we run a container from an image. Okay. Remember that in another live stream, uh, I forgot this comma. This comma. Yeah. <laughs> it took me like twenty minutes to to go to that. So <laughs> now I'm I'm super careful about this. Okay. So now we can do we could do a uh, Docker run, but since we already have a Docker compose, why we don't just add the the service, Peter? What do you think? That's perfect. That's perfect. I love it. This is this is my approach. Yes. Yes. Uh, so we, we can define another service. We call this the JS app for JavaScript app. I like to always define a container name, but I can use the same. And here as an image, we can use this. This is my um, Docker Hub handler. I don't know if you can, can follow me on Docker, on Docker Hub, but... Uh... <laughs> okay. Not yet, but we... Yeah, it's a great idea. That would be a great idea, a feature that we need, because GitHub has that. Yes, 100%. Okay. Okay, so now this will do something a little bit different uh, from other tutorials where you have just one service because here we will have two folders. Let me do, okay, so this will be a little bit better. We'll have two folders. So since we have just one Docker file and we want to build this, we can do this in different ways. We can either decide a different name for the Docker file, but I'm pretending that I already have maybe this JavaScript project and I've put this inside this repository. For example, we can also use different repositories, but uh, if we have this in the same uh, folder, we can uh, do this. So if I can spell build, of course, it seems, <laughs> it seems that I can't. Okay, we can uh, do build and then context. Context, which basically is the, is the folder. Okay, so we will build um, using the file called the Docker file because that's the, the, the default one. And uh, and then using the in this folder. So and then uh, the ports, the port we can define as you said before, uh, externally internally. Let's do this. Okay. And okay. Now we need to add some environment variables later, but I want to start without them. Them. So we can do depends on the. Um, it's the DB service, okay. The, of course, we are not using this yet. It's just for me because otherwise I forget this. Uh, I'll forget this uh, <laughs> um, after, of course. <laughs> and I say this because I do this, not the, okay. So let's try now uh, to um, to build this, uh, to build and uh, and run this um, this service. So we can do Docker Compose app and do JS app. Let's to show something. Let's see. First of all, let's see if it starts. Okay. It seems that it's working. Okay, I forgot to, to remove this, but it's working. Now, something uh, I'd like to show something very, very fast. If we change this, but this is something that happens to me. If we do if you do this, and if I do a, a Docker compose up again, do you know what's gonna happen? I think you you know. Yes, I know. <laughs> you know. I think you know because well, I've seen so many people. This is also happens. Still happens to me. So if you do this, you do this. So I'd say okay. So Docker is not working because it's not a uh, it's not updating. Why? Um, because it, it's it's uh, how the Docker Compose works. The Docker Compose works is in this way. 
if you don't have uh, if you don't have this uh, this image, uh, first of all, I think that the first thing that tries to do is to uh, it tries to see if that world exists on Docker Hub, or maybe first of all it checks uh, locally. But if you already have uh, the the image locally, it uses the same image. So you have the two choices here. You can either remove the image every time, or you can do simple this one this command. Touch build. Right. Like, and it still happens. Still happens to me that I forget to. The, <laughs> so, yeah, because the first time you don't need that. So, like, yeah. So uh, now, for example, w when I when I create a service, I do Docker compose up up up, up build even the first time. So. Yep. Yes. <laughs> okay. So let's okay. So let's start to to create this. Okay. So uh, let's create a, a folder called util because we need the, the connection with the DB. So why not call this file database.js? The connection and uh, here we need to define a sqlize object so so you say that you're also a fan of sqlize what's that say that you also have used the sqlize in the past yes so. yes yeah i really like it like you said there's probably there's probably some newer uh libraries uh, or modules but packages uh, there is type rm or uh, prisma prisma yeah I like SQLize because it it's um it has a feature I think uh, where it'll normalize your database and make changes and you can you can have a you can define your database in in code, um, your schemas, yes. um, and all your really relationships easy. and everything. It's 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 really neat. Yes, if you if you can use that the way I'm doing a, a boring part. So and of course here uh, I do something that I, I should not do. Yes, I already made a mistake here. And one important thing is that if you use the SQLize, this happened also to me. I'll, I'll tell you all my all my mistakes, so you can save some time. Is the it, it should be in this exact order because, uh, of course, uh, this will take this object and it, it has to be the database, then the user, then the password. And here we can define another object. This is one of the trickiest part uh, in when you connect a database with a service, right? I don't know if you agree this host stuff yes. because if you start with uh, not with a container uh, we, you can have uh, a problem if you know what i'm talking about yes okay, okay so maybe we need a common okay and then something that i usually forget but this time no because i've done that many times is the to export uh, this uh, this, uh, this model okay okay so okay so okay so we have defined this uh, this file to for the configuration and we need to add this environment variable but we can have this uh, later so let's go fast here let's create a, um, a simple model let's call these users js and here in the here we can uh, first of all uh, i can do this should not do this but uh, i can copy from here and yes, and then this, let's call this uh, DB. Okay, and here we can require this uh, this file, database. Okay. Okay, now, uh, okay, this part also is a bit boring, but this is, I think this is very useful because once you define a model with the, SQLize, then we will just synchronize this uh, and it will create the, um, the tables for us, which I think that it's a very good uh, feature. What do you think? Yes, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was talking about uh, just a couple of minutes ago. But yeah, that, that's a feature I really like is you can have it, you can define your schema inside of your code. Um, yeah. Some, some, you know, I, I have other uh, past co-workers that would argue, well, you know, you should keep it outside of there you should keep you know your separations and concerns and it's valid that's a valid um you know the way to think about it but I, I also like to think about when you're starting out and going fast right put it in your code and then refactor it out right keep it nice and clean just like you're doing here it's in its own file easier to refactor right yeah, of course this is a way to prototype something fast of course if you are in a team and this is a very important project uh, maybe you can do this in a different way but uh, yeah this is uh, so while we were talking i just defined an, an id 
a username and an email. So just two strings uh, and ID with an auto increment feature. So we'll go um, uh, every time we'll uh, increment that, of course, as the name suggests. And also this is a primary key. And uh, yes, Beautiful. remember that in a, in a previous uh, live stream, I forgot uh, this I, I was uh, was not capital and I spent like 20 minutes so uh, this time I'll be I'll be careful <laughs> okay so um and so now we have defined also the the model for this and now now we need to, of course we need to make some changes uh, in the index.js uh, .js file and we need not much to be honest but uh, we need to import uh, and do some do some stuff here so we can require this uh, this file, which is remember that that's the configuration of B. And then the model. Here there is a little uh, glitch of the of the um, studio code because uh, uh, it says that you don't need this. You see here, so, no, uh, it, it will stay like that, but uh, you, <laughs> you need that because SQL needs that needs that. Oh, okay, one important thing here, here is that we will get our data using a, a, JSON, a JSON object, a, a, JSON, a JSON file. And uh, so um, we, can, we can do this in different ways. And there is this new, or well, maybe it's not that new, but uh, <laughs> I discovered this uh, some a um, bit ago. So we do this. So we, we have this embedded in, uh, in Node.js. So in, in using this, we can get uh, some data in json json format okay so yeah that that correct me if i'm wrong but that every request that comes in express i think someone asked uh, mentioned in the in the chat that they're not a a node developer yeah we're, we're not going to go too deep into the node code but those of you that are not but and those that you are that's a that's a middleware statement he's putting in there so uh express cool. has this concept of middleware so a request will come in and you can add things to um a chain of functions to be executed exactly this is executed yeah. in this way yeah and i like this name use so you use and then you pass through this yep. yes okay so in the meanwhile we have created this other endpoint so i think yeah i think this is understandable that here we, if you go on slash you have this and if you go on go on slash users with a post request uh, you have uh, you executed this uh, uh, asynchronous function. We have this, and uh, we're not going into details here, but uh, basically here we'll create something like this. Uh, and then uh, since we have this uh, uh, asynchronous function, we can define a try-catch method. Uh, first of all, before I forget this, uh, I prefer to start from this. So if we have an error, we can do press.status, uh, like, I don't know, 500. We'll not go deep into error rendering, of course, in this uh, one hour demo, but you can, you can handle this in, in various and better different ways. Yeah. So here we can, uh, and here, this, here, here it starts the interesting part because uh, we can do this uh, command, which is, will be available because we have defined the SQLite object. So we spent some time to define the model, but then we, here we can just uh, type user.create. And I think that this is uh, it's kind of powerful. And now uh, body username. Usually here I have the, the auto completion. Let's see. Okay. So here we will create this user passing this object. We can also create a separate object, of course. And in the end, we can return yes, that status. Usually when you create a new uh, resource, uh, the the FTP code is 200, 201.json user. And here we will see something interesting because of SQLite, because I don't know if you remember that, but SQLite adds a couple of columns. But let's see. Now, here, instead of listening to the, this port, let's let me do something a little bit different, but this will be interesting, of course, if I don't make any typos. And uh, so we can <laughs> call this object, and this sync will synchronize the, the, the models with the current DB. Here we can do some, we can add this, uh, I, I can't remember which is the default, so I prefer to define this <laughs> every time. So we can define force false. So if you have force true, every time you run this, uh, it will clean uh, <laughs> and uh, remove your DB. So maybe it's not a good idea to put a force true on a production DB, of course. And, <laughs> and then 
uh, then, then the, the keyword can then we can listen to we can listen to um, this port which already exists still doesn't exist and external port i like here to define an environment variable so we can also change this uh, from docker compose and if we get an error we can just catch the error and we'll just log there okay so uh, we're almost done almost done we just need to, to define the docker compose so once i'm done with this i'll ask you how much time has, has passed uh, let's see okay you're fine nice okay. okay so here okay here we, need, we can we need to define five environment variables let me go here let me do something super risky <laughs> here <laughs> this is don't do, don't do this don't don't do what I, what i do please okay i do more mo i spent more time uh checking uh, <laughs> checking when i do this then uh, that's okay okay by the way i started yeah i started to stream on on twitch uh, and it's uh, docker stuff uh, and i'm really enjoying this uh, so i think that I'll yeah continue. yeah stream is stream is very uh i mean um twitch is very interesting so we were talking a little bit before we got started. But yeah. It's interesting, and um, I can also say that I'm already an affiliate. I monetized in four days. It took me like <laughs> six months to, to monetize, monetize YouTube with almost 200 videos. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Okay. So, okay. So if I have not misspelled anything, if you are on chat and if you see any error, please uh, help my life. And uh, okay, so the database, the user. So the, 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 now you know why I call this the sports, it's just <laughs> to, to my mental sanity. And uh, okay, so uh, a, very, a very important part here is this one, this part, this PG host equal DB. Because usually if you don't have containers, you, you, you hit uh, an URL, right? You can also do this uh, in Docker, of course, but uh, I think that a good way is to define uh, the same service. Uh, so if, if the containers are in the same network, they will find each other using, not, not this one, by the way, but this one, sorry, the container name, which is the same of the service. So this one mm -hmm. will find this one. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Nice. Okay. So now let me check again, but of course here we shouldn't have any surprise. So we have this. Now let's try to uh, run the container called JS app again with, with a dash dash build it should rebuild everything. Let's see if I made some typos. We can, you can bet of this. Let's see. Hmm. Okay. Now there we go. <laughs> okay. So let's see. I would, I would have been extremely impressed if we did not get an error. <laughs> okay. So it seems that it has some problem with the, the let's see, uh, cannot find the module. So maybe a uh, utils. I made uh, utils. I think you might have called it just you too. It's util. It's util. Okay, let's see. Mm, okay, fine. Now, if I do this, okay, now I feel better. Nice, there we okay, go. Okay, so this is interesting because uh, have you seen that without uh, hitting any endpoint, we have already the table. So we have this, okay. And uh, of course, if we do this, users, it's empty. And uh, here we see something interesting because you can you see that here we have two more columns. We have not defined this. Let me go on the models because I see well, it's by default, it adds uh, these two uh, uh, columns. So you can also remove this, but usually um, I like this feature, for example. Okay, now let's open Postman. Postman. I think that you can do this also in different times. I don't know which is the, your favorite one uh, tool to test some APIs, some APIs. I'll lie and say Postman because a good friend of mine is over at Postman. But I, I really do like Postman, but I like uh, Insomnia also. I use them both. Okay, and here you can see all, all my tries uh, on <laughs> Twitch already. So let, uh, this was uh, yeah, Josh. Okay, so okay, so let. Okay. Can you see here? Maybe it's a bit confusing. Okay, let's try like this. So, if we do this, uh, don't check, don't look this. Uh, but I'll use this uh, later. I'll save it. So 
Okay, so here, can you see the, 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 the response, 200, this is the same. But of course, to make a post request, I can't use a browser. I, could, I can create a React application, but maybe not in this uh, live stream. So, right. <laughs> sorry, but uh, it's really, it would, be, time. it would be uh, a little problem. So, okay, so in your honor, Peter, I'll, I'll call this, uh, I call this uh, one. And of course, we will use your super secret password. <laughs> which is in this email probably will fail if you use a proper validator mm -hmm. okay okay uh, and here you can see that it has returned in the response uh, uh, peter uh, the email is null so i see that there is maybe a problem with the email let me check this is is not for the for the let's see maybe i have just one small uh, Ah, here is email, but uh, I think it's okay because uh, okay, can you can you forgive me? I forgive <laughs> Peter, you. If you don't have any mail, it's it's, it's for a private, it's a private for privacy reasons. The, I'm not showing yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, the, the hardest okay. part of, of doing live streams is typing in front of people. That's that's the hardest. Believe me. Of course, of course. Okay, so if, now if we do the select star from users, this maybe since I don't like this empty, let me. Let me add myself and use my handler on the on Twitch, which is this one, as an email. It doesn't make sense, but okay. And okay, no, ah, because I've not I've not <laughs> reloaded the, the application. Okay, yes, so, yeah. okay, so okay, so they will stay like that. Okay, so this is the this was the um, the JavaScript uh, this JavaScript part. If you if you then if you the, Download the code. You will also have the email because I've, I've changed this. If we have time, we will reboot this up this uh, from scratch. Okay. So, how much time do we have uh, left, uh, Peter? Oh, you have plenty of time. We can of we can go over. We don't have to stop at the top of the hour. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. So now uh, the hard part because I'm not an expert in Python, but I, I made some some practice uh, with. Uh, I, I'll use a Flask here. I don't know if you have any experience with Python or which one is your favorite. Uh, uh, Python uh, uh, framework. Uh, I have some friends of mine who use uh, Django, one of the most famous YouTubers. And uh, but here I'll just uh, try to do the <laughs> I'll just to code as as few as, as I can. So uh, yeah. let's create um, mm, and I'll try to do this without even running this uh, locally. So just uh, just typing this and then uh, using the Docker file and then I'll just use in the Docker Compose if I can do this. Okay. So uh, in the requirements.txt file, you can you can define the, um, requ the requirements, uh, the dependencies for the, this Flask application. So in here, we can use Flask, of course, which is the framework. And then we can use the Psycho PG2, which seems a horror movie, <laughs> a pretty old, old horror movie. But uh, now they suggest to use this one, but we, you can also remove the dash binary. And then, uh, this which is the it's called flask um, sql alchemy i've just checked this for this uh, last for this last stream by the way so this is basically i don't know if it is exactly an rm but it helps you to um, to create the table and to make the inserts so this is the the requirements dot, dot uh, txt uh, file in the meanwhile let me check okay so we have done all of these i think yes Yes, so now we are on the Flask part. So we have done the requirements. Uh, and now we need to create uh, an app.py uh, file. And here, so one second, let me stop a moment. We need to make some imports, but this file will be smaller. We will just uh, code the application in just one file for, for Python. So yes, just a moment, one second. Okay, so um, okay, so here we can uh, from Flask we can import uh, uh, Flask and the request we will need, them. and then uh, no. Francesco uh, Del Void yeah. Gaming says he's watching you, so be careful. Who it must be it, it might be a friend in in the chat is on is watching on the show. He said he's watching you. So <laughs> uh, well, can you repeat the name, please? Del Void. Delvoid Gaming. Delvoid, Delvoid, yes. Okay, so uh, he's a subscriber to my Twitch channel, so please, so don't make any spoiler, please. 
<laughs> <laughs> Thank you, by the way. I don't know. Uh, I always, uh, it's always strange that someone, uh, when someone supports you, it's always, uh, it's, uh, it's great. It's great. Uh, yeah. if, you, if you have someone, uh, for example, if you like this video, like this video, subscribe to this channel, you, you are close to 100,000. So how are you going to celebrate? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'll ask Docker to buy me a, a cake. <laughs> we, can all, we can all share it. <laughs> because the, the, the channel was going pretty strong before before I started you know, doing the streaming. So oh, it definitely, so, definitely so, wasn't so, all, all me. So it's all your fault, Peter. You have been a little bit uh, unlucky. <laughs> That's uh, okay. So in the meanwhile, I'm defining the other. Well, are. while you're typing, <laughs> while you're yeah. typing, folks, if if uh, yeah, be it'd be interesting to hear. Um, yeah, what what framework do you like? Do you like Flask, um, uh, ASCII, not, whatever? Uh, yeah, you should, for for what for Python or to for just my development? If for, I just uh, to create for Python, yeah, and I'm and I'm curious what other you know in the chat if anybody. Uh, uh, usually, you, use, okay. Yeah. Usually, if, yeah, for Python, I just code uh, in just in this case. Uh, I like also like like J Django, or Django, and yep. it, it depends. It depends on the on what you want to create. Usually, I'm more uh, JavaScript JavaScript person, but it depends. Uh, we are here. We are here for this uh, reason. We because we want to show that you can do the exact the same thing, and maybe Python also has, does it even better. I don't want to say better, but maybe it's a bit faster. Mm -hmm. Okay. And meanwhile, we were talking, um, and this is one of the hardest part, which is memorize this <laughs> this string. I tried, yeah. but th that's impossible. So I need to Google that every time. I hope that uh, this will not make me lose uh, some some point. So no, not at all. <laughs> I, I, I wanted to let everybody, especially especially the more um, you know, folks that are just new to programming or getting involved, new to Docker, whatever. Yeah, I, lo I love that you went into the documentation, copied it out, and brought it over. Right, the world has changed with the Googles and the internets, right? Because you can yeah. you can offload a lot of your memory to the web, and these things like I, I go and look up Mongo's uh, database connection string format all the time, all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it's a course. Never remember it. Yeah, it's a course. Yeah, m one goal, one goal could be to. By the way, here I've created. I've, um, I've passed uh, this. This will be my own personal uh, environment variable. You can do this also in a better way in Python. But uh, uh, what I'm trying to do is to type as uh, as less, as few as I can, so to to minimize the typos. But uh, we, here we can do, for example, os dot get uh, environment variable and also uh, set a default. But uh, uh, this is the the, the shortest way to do this. So this is the yeah. the reason of this. Okay, so and here we can then define this uh, the this uh, object uh, called uh, DB. Okay, now uh, we can do this in maybe a different file. Sometimes this. Uh, okay, so model model. Okay, so here we will define um, um, a different model, and to do this we will create a um, uh, Python class. Uh, and usually a, a class is, is called with a singular name, like like an item, but. Uh, since uh, we are creating the, the table in the DB, I'll call the, the model with the plural. So I don't know if there is a, maybe there is a better way. Maybe you can define the table name. If you know that in the chat, you can also write that. But uh, this is <laughs> this is the, the shortest way, of course. Yeah. OK, so um, OK, so primary key. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can try with another uh, DB. <laughs> of course, not today, but uh, another time. It will, it will be nice. Yeah, uh, I have this idea. We can also um, try maybe with, with different databases and different services. To be honest, this is one of my favorite part uh, in, in programming. So it's uh, I'm very happy also to do this here. Okay, so here I'm defining the. Uh, can you see the structure? I think it's pretty intuitive. We are creating just a, uh, a model with uh, an ID um, and a title and a content. So here we can define. Uh, Mm, init, okay, not init, and here we can pass yes. Using um, an extension which is called the tab nine, which helps you to autocomplete self dot title equal title. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I tend to to put semicolons at the end when I when I write some part of stuff. So that's a good, that's a bad sign. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, yeah, some some Python developers can spot me, probably in that case. <laughs> Create all 
we are almost done. And then, and then we can chat at the end. So yeah, first, no, this is beautiful. First, first let's, let's do this. Yeah, so, because, Paul, yeah. so Paul, you, you said Python. Is there a, is there a, um, a web REST API framework that you prefer? Or do you, or do you write in your own and just in Python? Yeah, and usually, usually, usually mm, I think that I prefer Flask for what I need to do. I, for, to be honest, I started thinking that uh, I would have come here with the Django application, but since we just needed to hit some, uh, some a couple of endpoints, uh, maybe this is this is even easier. So it depends on what you want to do. If you if you need REST API, I think a Django is a great support also to have so to test. Uh, Test the API. So, but here we just need uh, really a couple of endpoints. So, this is basically like the hello world. We can say hello Python, hello Python, something like that. Okay. And now we just we are we are really close to to the end. So we just need to create the controller to make the insert using the Flask uh, application. So up route I. Route or route? Because it depends if you are from UK or from the USA. <laughs> for, for route, yeah, route, route. I think that in the UK they say route. We have been arguing about this uh, <laughs> in my job, in my last job. <laughs> Here in the States, it just depends. Uh, pr pr probably what part of the States you're in. Cool. Can, can, do you know that you can make a poll in a, in a, in YouTube? It's Okay, so uh, request dot get underscore uh, so that can be fast. Okay, so I think it's pretty intuitive. So that if you hit uh, this endpoint slash items with a post verb in the as a, in the HTTP request, then uh, this is a way to get the body of the of the request, and then we can just uh, can extract the the two variables. Uh, the title, yes, and then the content. Okay, it's an auto completion. And now we can just we, we are close session add items with title and content. We'll have some time to for bugs, of course, not to chat. BB. Okay, by the way, I'm writing the I'm writing the. Um, the Python application, but we still need the, the, the Docker file for the Python application. We can do this um, maybe later, but uh, let's do it uh, now. Let's see if it was... Uh, okay, no, no, I'm, I'm following what I'm doing. So I've done this, then I've done this. Now, let's. I don't want to check before doing that. That would be a, a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So uh, now let's create uh, a Docker file for, uh, for Python. And uh, here, okay, so... Um, I like the, your explanation. By the way, if you I don't know if you know that you can use uh, um, this extension of Docker for VS Code, yes. and uh, it's uh, I think it's uh, it's useful. You can also use it. But for example, if you if you do like this, you are redirected to the Python uh, official image. For example, sometimes it's can kind of useful. To yeah. be honest, it's more useful for me to see if I misspelled Python with an H to send in some other place. But okay. <laughs> Requirements.txt. And then I'll show you something interesting, if I can uh, spell everything. That this will look uh, pretty similar than the node, uh, node one. So here we can uh, run, uh, you can use uh, uh, pip, which is the uh, package manager for Python. You can install, it's a bit different. The, the syntax, of course, it's a different language, but uh, it's the idea is similar that we have these requirements file like the package.json and we install the requirements. Then we can also create the environment, the virtual env, but in this example, we don't need this because we will have just these files inside here. So we'll copy everything. We don't need the Docker ignore here. Let's expose uh, the port, which will be 80, and then the cmd command, which is, uh, the, as I said before, is just the default one, right, uh, Peter? Yes. So you can also replace this. So, uh, here we can do flask 
run dash dash. And here we can just define the host. It can be zero and uh, four zeros, yes. <laughs> yep. That is that has tripped me up a bunch this of times. Morning, yeah, this, this morning I made this. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and the techni technically Josh helped me. So thank you again, technically Josh. Yeah, he works. And I and I wrote uh, post instead of port, as I said before. So it has been useful. It has been useful. Okay, so I've also created the Docker file. So what do what do you what do we miss, Peter? What do you think? Uh, I think you're ready to go. I think you should test it and see if see if it works. No, no, we need the Python the Python service. <laughs> oh, you're gonna okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. You're even more daring than me. Okay, so container name. I hope that this will be fast. Let's copy this. Okay. So this is the way. Now the build. And uh, I think at least here it's um, pretty clear that here we are using a different a different uh, folder, which is will be called uh, Python. And then the um, the ports. Uh, here we are using the port uh, 80. So we can do this. Let's do this. And then uh, just the environment variable because in the first uh, in the first tries, I was just uh, copying all the environment variables uh, one by one. But here it becomes really crazy with Python. So what I will do is that I'll take this one. But this is my SQL. No, this is wrong. But why? I looked for the. Pascal, can you think this is PostgreSQL? But uh, <laughs> let me let me double check PostgreSQL. Okay. Yes, this one. No, it was PostgreSQL, not PostgreSQL. I think. No, but this is the problem. <laughs> Never copy from the from the question, yeah. but always copy from the answer. This is the. This is a rule to become a, a senior developer. <laughs> yeah. Now Francisco knows what he's doing and knows what he's looking for. So be careful. You, you know, when you're in when you're in Stack Overflow, really read the answers and understand what you're reading, and then try. But Francisco knows it's yes. it's a little different than what he did there. You know, you you just don't know the exact form, but once you see it, you go, okay, yep, there it is. Believe me, I've done. I do that hundred percent. I was gonna tease you for uh, copy and paste that Stack Overflow. Nice. I do no, have coming no. in the mail this weekend. It'll come, I believe, Saturday. So maybe next week. Um, I'm getting the cut, copy, and paste keys from Stack Overflow. It's mm -hmm. a little, it's a little small keyboard that only has cut, copy, and paste. And the and the copy key is is the Stack Overflow logo. It's pretty cool. I'll show mm -hmm. it. I'll take some pictures and show it to folks, and then show it on okay. live. Okay. Yeah, it's Maybe. just kind of like a little gimmicky okay, so, thing. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So let's finish this so you can you can show me. So here we are defining. This is the, um, the dialect or the name of the DB, I think. So these, I can't remember. The, oh, this is the username, the password, which is the same in our case. Yeah. And the, the name of the service, and this will be the name of the DB, which is, in our case, it will be, it will be Postgres. So I think uh, that we just need to add this depends on, and we are set uh, to see if we have some errors. Peter, let's see. OK. I have okay, faith. so we are no so we, we are done by everyone. <laughs> no, no, let's <laughs> let's check it. Let's check it. Docker compose up dash dash build Python up. Okay, crossed fingers. No. Okay. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait. Oh so yeah, uh, yeah. So this is wrong. Okay. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah there you so go. no, that's okay. Um, maybe let's go here and now Docker compose up dash dash the Python app. But before running this, uh, probably it will fail. But let me show you again that uh, we have just we have just uh, what is that? We have just the old users. Oh, what is this? We have just the old users. So now let's run this. Uh, Let's see. Hmm. Let's see. 
Yeah, I think they're just yes. telling you. Yeah, Work. those are just all warnings so, in the console there. Exactly. Yeah. So as before, we have just created a, a, a new table. But so for the for the database, it's the same because we have just created a, a new table, but with two different languages. So now think about using maybe different languages. And they, of course, once you have the them, you can also make them talk to each other. You can do a lot of stuff. For, of course, I'll. I'll push this on a public repository at the end of the demo, but uh, the final test, it will be this. So first of all, let's see if we get some Hello Python stuff. Yes. So yeah. this is, just let me show that this is this one. That's this one, very simple. And mm -hmm. then the, this is the most important one. So if we, if it, this works, we, we can we can chat. Uh, as well as items, and this is the title, title, and content. So in this case, I don't know. Title and the content. I always spell out of ideas, and I don't know. Content. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Also, I also, and this is should be a post request. So, okay, let's see. Yeah. Okay, maybe I, maybe I need to, to run, run to write something else. But if we have a two hundred. Maybe we should have changed this. But let's let's check the important thing. So if we do select star from items items, yes, we have oh, yeah. the insert with Python. How much time, Peter? Beautiful. That's perfect. That's beautiful. We're we're right at twelve oh five local time for me, which is in Austin, Texas. Um, it's what, 6 p.m. for you? 6.04, 6.05, something like that? Nice. Yes. Get, yeah, yeah, I'm getting, it's it's not even dinner time over there yet. You have you have four or five more hours before dinner in Italy, correct? <laughs> it depends. No, it depends. <laughs> we, 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 we eat uh, all day long in Italy, so. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Which you should. I've been to Italy. The pizza, <laughs> I know I know a lot of people say, you know, the pizza in, in uh, Italy is fan. It is, I can attest to that. Yes. I, when I was a young man, uh, probably my early 20s, I was in Italy and um, all I did was eat pizza out of the brick ovens. Literally, it's, literally, I would have a whole whole pizza I, every day. I said this is not a good idea for your diet, but uh, <laughs> I, 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 am, I am Italian, so I can't I can't blame pizza anyway. Uh, <laughs> before I forget, uh, Peter, let me push this uh, to the repository. So you can also link this in the chat, by the way, it's on my GitHub. So let's add uh, everything. Let's commit. Uh, yeah, and I'll uh, I'll put the I'll put the links in the, in the show notes okay. um, to the GitHub repository, so you can pull it down. You can rewatch and and uh, yes, and so, work along with it. Let's see. I think we should really have this Git remote. Oh, we don't have this. So let me let me add the the repository. Let me oh, create yeah, this. The, but uh, yes, let me create a new one. So this will be called like Docker Live, right in November, because uh, maybe maybe you will invite me again in, in next year. So I put this Docker Hive to the. Uh, Perfect. <laughs> okay, and we can just copy this since we have in stuff. Okay. There we go. There we go. If it opens. Okay, so this here is the link. I don't know if you can put this. I can if there is a chat here, but uh, okay. So this is the this is the the link. Okay. Wonderful, Done. wonderful. That is that is awesome. Thank you so much for going through it. We went through a lot, folks. So yeah, you're yes. welcome, Brando. Said uh, it's amazing. Thanks. Um, and so this is so the intent is the to make a base, and we started with. Compose, wrote to two services, talking to a database. It's yeah. very, very easy to then you could add another database in that compose. So you can have the you could have the uh, the express node application talk to one database. Uh, let's say you wanted to talk to use Mongo there instead of Postgres, right? So uh, you know what? Jump jump over. Let's just uh, could you show your your compose file again real quick, if you wouldn't mind. I just moved the camera. Just give me one second. Oh no worries. Yeah, that's perfect right there. So instead of so we have DB there, right? We can create mm -hmm. another entry in your compose file for Mongo, right? And you would set up the same exact variables. You would set up the image that would then again pull it right down from Docker Hub, 
Uh, you don't have to go and build your own Mongo base image and use that. And and, uh, and then you can connect them and you can actually put them on separate networks. That Maybe that's something we can we can have yeah. you back and we can we can build out this this project a little bit. But this is the base. This is the base where you could to. And then you can also uh, take everybody take a look at our dev environments uh, feature where you can place yes. this using a compose file or a Docker file. You can place your whole development environment inside of Docker containers and run everything in the containers as you're developing, right? And get hot yes. reloading and all those type of things. Um, yeah, perfect, wonderful. Well, yeah, yeah. of course, of course, Peter, this is a base. This is not production already code because I've just worked one hour. Usually you work yeah. for months before going on production. But this is a good, I think this is, this is how I, sh I would do this. If I should have to create like a JavaScript, another application, in a Python application, and maybe they need to talk each other. Maybe, okay, the, the title, it was microservices. We have just created just one endpoint. So if no, if no, if we are allowed to call them microservices, but the idea is that I, I've noticed that maybe it, it takes more time to create maybe the connection between services than actually write the endpoints. Because once you have the endpoint working, you can use boilerplates, you can use your, your favorite uh, best practice. Uh, and uh, yes, so this was, I think it was the most uh, tricky part. So this was the goal of this, uh, of this live stream. Yeah, great. So we got a, a question or a comment here. It's a nice feature if Docker provided import Docker file for a project layer or a service. Oh yeah, so do, using multiple Docker files and are you talking about layering uh, in a Docker file using importing other Docker files inside of your Docker file? Yeah, it'd be, it'd be very interesting for sure. You can do that with compose, yeah. compose files so you can have overwrites in your compose files. So yeah. Um... yeah. For example, we have not shown that, for example, we can also use uh, different names for Docker files. So, so here I've pretended that we had like already uh, a JavaScript project and a Python project. So usually when you have just one project, you don't name this like, we could have named like this like uh, Docker file dot JavaScript, for example. In that case, you need to define a Docker file in the build, in the build, uh, in the Docker compose. But I, I prefer to do the, yeah, the cleanest one. So just, yeah. uh, I've, I've used the folder. So this is, was my decision, of course. Feel free to yeah. change this. Yeah, no, it's it's wonderful. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. So I'm gonna, uh, yeah. Let me. I have a couple uh, shout outs or or places to go. So we had some great questions in the in the chat. We have a public roadmap. So if you have some features that you want to see in Docker Desktop, in uh, Build, in Hub, anything we do. Um, Please go to over to our roadmap. That is our public roadmap, and is it and is in our internal roadmap. So those are the things that we're working on. Uh, a lot of jo um, a lot of the Docker engineers are in there. They they use that roadmap. Our product uh, folks are in there. We do use that. So please, if you have a feature request or if you just want to join in the conversation and and um, uh, be part of Docker's future and where we want to go and what features we build, please go over to the roadmap. That's one of the best places to connect with us. Also, you can join our community. So if you go to, um, uh, actually, it's this one. My apologies. Uh, so if you go to docker.com forward slash docker dash community, we have a community Slack. You can join our community Slack. Um, a bunch of us are in there from Docker. Most all of us are. Engineers are in there. We have captains and community leaders. And then just our community at large is fantastic uh, for answering questions, helping folks out. That's the best place to go if you're having problems with your uh, local installs or trying to run images that uh, trying to figure out the, the correct environment variables to set when you're running an image, those type of things. Uh, the community can help you for sure. Um, and then you can also reach me on Twitter. That's probably the, the primary place I am online. Um, feel free to tweet at me if you have a question. Again, I always give a caveat. It's really hard to help folks troubleshoot issues, uh, especially their local environment on Twitter. So my apologies, I cannot always especially, help. Yeah. yeah, especially if you send screenshots instead of a link. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> but I will. Uh, if you do reach out, I will help. Either try to get your answer, uh, answer your question if I can't, or if it's too hard on Twitter, I'll get you pointed in the right direction. But probably the best yeah. place is to jump over into Slack or in our community Slack. We also have a a, a lot of community uh, meetups around the world. Um, different parts of the world are coming back doing face to face. Most are still virtual. But um, yeah, connect into the meetups. Uh, we got a lot of things planned for this coming year. Um, 
the world is starting to open up. Hopefully, hopefully it keeps trending in that and in that direction. I'd love to get out there and start uh, seeing everybody face to face and and talking to folks. But um, hopefully that'll come soon. But uh, it, yeah, this, this would be a dream to meet you in person. I think I'll ask you an autograph. <laughs> feel, feel, feel ready, feel ready because I'll, I'll ask for that for real. Yes, yes. Um, you're too kind. You're too kind. You'll make me blush. <laughs> you know, I get red, red yes, yes. cheeks. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, great. So, uh, thanks so much again for coming on. I really enjoyed it. This was fantastic. Let's have you back on. Let's have you back on. We'll continue down this road and we'll, we'll build this out a little bit more. Yes. And uh, I or think we can talk about something else. But yeah, whatever you want. I think I'll keep practicing. Thank you for because uh, since I had to do to, to come here and making this uh, this uh, live stream, I made some practice on Twitch, and I think that my Twitch channel will be focused yes. on Docker. So this is basically what I what I, I do almost every day. For now, I've streamed for five or six days. I can I start to, to don't remember. So this that's a good sign, and it's a good way. I can also just tell you. I let me suggest you if you. If you are, uh, if you want to make some presentation, that would be the best way because maybe the first version, uh, one week ago, I was a bit scared because I did a lot of mistakes. Then by doing this publicity with people helping you today, okay, I made some some typos but minor things, and so I suggest highly suggest you to to start streaming and don't worry if you get uh, don't get many viewers, but it's more about you if you do something that you really like. For example, <laughs> this is not yeah. a secret that I like Docker. So that would be also a good thing to do. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Great advice. Yeah. And I put the Twitch channel up there on the screen. Uh, please go over there and follow Francisco um, and learn with them and learn with us. Awesome. Thank Perfect. you so much for joining me. I really, really appreciate it. We will definitely have you back on. Thank you, everybody, for joining live with all your questions. I really appreciate it. And hopefully we'll see everybody soon. Take care. Perfect.